Hello everybody and welcome back. In the previous clip, we've created our very first corona physical material with the help of these presets here, right? These awesome, cool presets that make your material creation process easier. But in this clip, in this tutorial, we'll be creating a corona physical material from scratch and we won't be using any of the presets and instead we're just going to create this material really uh, from complete scratch. All right. Now, uh, the material that we'll be creating uh, is going to be this uh, raw wood material that's going to get applied to the body of our violin here. Okay. So uh, let's not beat around the bush too much here. Right. <laughs> and let's just go to work. Right. So um, we already have a selection set ready here that will select all of the relevant meshes where we want our raw wood material applied to. So um, we're just going to make sure that we have the selection uh, selected here. And then we're going to uh, select our Corona physical material here and assign it to the selection. All right. Now, just to make sure that the material got applied and all the correct on all the correct meshes, essentially on the all the correct objects, we're going to lower the level down to zero here. Okay. That's going to make our material completely dark, as you can see. And now we can visually inspect whether everything got applied where we want it to be. And it it seems like it it got applied. On all the relevant parts. So uh, let's reset the level here to its default value by right clicking on the little spinner here. And let's start creating our wood material here. So the first step that we want you to take whenever you're creating a new Corona physical material from scratch is to make sure that the metalness parameter is set accordingly to the type of material that you're creating. If we expand the metalness parameter drop down here, you're going to see that you have two options to choose from a non metal option and a metal option. Okay. Now, non metal option is for whenever you're creating materials, uh, such as, you know, different kinds of wood materials, uh, plastics, fabrics, and, you know, just <laughs> generally non metal materials. The metal option as you've probably guessed so by now, uh, is used for whenever you're creating, for example, um, a chrome material, an iron material, and so on and so forth, right? So, you know, the first step that we want you to take here is to uh, decide what kind of a material you're creating and choose the metalness option here accordingly, right? So now you know what you need to do, but why does, why does it even matter which kind of uh, metalness mode here you've selected well it matters because this is one of the most fundamental parameters that you can tweak whenever you're creating a corona physical material okay and it will broadly speaking it will affect your material creation process in two ways okay one way it'll affect it is by well depending on the type of metalness mode that you have selected here the ui is going to behave differently okay and then that second point, the second way that this metalness mode is going to affect your material creation process is, well, purely just the fact that non-metal materials behave differently than metal materials do. And so based on the metalness mode that you're selecting here, the Corona physical material is going to behave differently under the hood. Okay. Now, uh, let's dive deeper into the UI aspect here first. Okay. So. Um, you know, non-metal materials have certain parameters available to them that metal materials don't. Okay. And the same holds true for the metal materials. They have certain parameters that are, you know, metal only metal specific parameters, if you will. All right. So let's pay attention to the UI here for a little bit. All right. So right now we're creating a non-metal material. And as you can see, we have, for example, our thin shell parameter available for us to tweak here, right? Then we also have the IOR parameter here available that we can tweak. And then we can also, you know, for example, make our non-metal material here refractive if we so want it to, right? But, you know, one of the parameters that we cannot tweak is for example, the edge color parameters. You can see it's grayed out. We can click on it all we want, but nothing's gonna happen. Now, if we switch our metalness mode from non-metal to metal. Okay. Observe what's going to happen with some of these parameters here. So the thin shell option becomes grayed out. 
we can't tweak it. The IOR parameter becomes grayed out. We can't tweak it. And also, you know, we can't make our material refractive anymore, right? But what we can do, for example, is we can mess with the edge color parameter now, right? And that is because, you know, the UI, as you can see, is going to adapt based uh, on the type of material that you're setting out to create, right? So an edge color parameter is relevant only for the metal materials, right? And the, for example, the refraction uh, sort of parameter, the refraction grouping here will not be applicable to metal materials, but it will be applicable to non-metal materials here, right? And it's just, it's not just these parameters here uh, that we're showcasing, uh, you know, it's uh, pretty much the entire material as UI that's going to adapt. So for example, now that we're creating a non-metal material here, you're going to be able to see that we can make, um, well, this material have some volumetric scattering happening, right? If we lower the refraction, but just a little bit here, uh, then we can also have it do subsurface scattering. And the logic here is that, you know, non-metal materials can exhibit these kinds of properties. Okay, so that's why you can tweak them. But if, for example, you're creating a metal material, so you have the metalness mode set to metal, well then, you know, metal materials don't exhibit these kind of properties. Metal materials can't be refractive, and so they can't do volumetric scattering, and they can't do subsurface scattering. Okay, now, if we bring in a Corona Legacy material in here, all right, and if we, uh, well, if we try and create a basic metal material, so we're going to lower the diffuse level here and we're going to up the reflection, uh, sorry, the reflections here. And we're actually going to use a pretty high IOR value to get that nice metal look going. Well, now at this point, we've created some sort of a basic metal material, but what we can also do now is we can make this metal material be refractive, as you can see, all right? And this kind of a material, is not a physically plausible material. It does not exist in the real world. Sort of jokingly, we call these types of materials, materials monstrosities, okay? Because they're, they're just not physically plausible. All right, and as you can see, you could have created this type of a material monstrosity, if you will, using the Corona Legacy material. So what we've created here is a refractive metal material. Just think about that, a refractive metal material. Right. But thanks to the metalness mode and the cool UI in the Corona physical material, uh, well, you can't make those silly mistakes anymore. Right. So whenever, whenever we're creating a metal material, we can't have it be refractive because metals in real life are not refractive. Right. So if we switch back to uh, our, uh, to the non-metal mode here, you can see that now we can mess with the refraction. Right, because refraction is applicable to non-metal materials. All right, cool. Okay, so that covers the UI portion of how the metalness mode affects your material creation process. But if you'll remember, we also mentioned that the metalness mode uh, changes how the material works under the hood because non-metal materials work differently than metal materials do. All right, so to better demo, the differences here, we're going to set the roughness parameter here to a value of 0 0.1, which is going to make our reflections less diffuse. All right. And don't worry, we're, we're going to cover the roughness parameter more in depth a bit later on. But for now, you know, let's just set it to a value of 0 0.1, uh, which is going to make our reflections a bit more glossy, less diffuse. Right. And now pay attention to our material here as we switch our metalness mode from non-metal to metal. Okay. Okay. Here we go. We switched over to the metal mode and now our material looks like a basic metal material would look like. All right. And if we switch back to, uh, if we switch our metalness mode back to non-metal, well, now our material looks like some sort of a non-metal material. And Hopefully now you can clearly see that the metalness mode has a profound fundamental effect on your material. And just by switching between non-metal and metal modes, you can switch between, well, a visually uh, 
different material, right? So this one is clearly a metal material. And if we switch back to the non-metal mode, this one is clearly a non-metal material. And the non-metal mode works great for us here because, you know, if you'll remember, we, we've set out to create this raw wood material for our violin body here. And a raw wood material is a non-metal material. Now, as far as creating metal materials goes, well, don't worry at all, okay? This particular tutorial here will be focused on creating this wooden non-metal material, okay? But since this is a tutorial series, we'll cover metal materials in another tutorial. So in case you're wondering how to approach creating metal materials, well, there's a dedicated tutorial that's focused more on how to set up your typical metal material. All right, okay, so we have our metalness mode set accordingly here. And so now we can move on to the next sort of item on our material <laughs> creation process list here, if you will. All right, and the next thing that we should probably adjust on our material is basically the base color. Okay, so we want to plug in some sort of a diffuse texture into the base color slot. Now, as it happens, we already have a couple of textures ready here. And these are these textures here. So first, as we said, we're going to focus on that base color. So we'll bring in this diffuse texture in here. And if we take a look at it more closely, you can see it's just this, you know, really nice looking raw wood material uh, texture. Now it is plugged into the Corona triplanar map. We've adjusted some of the settings here. And that is because, well, our violin's body here doesn't really have proper uh, UV maps done, right? And so just to get rid of some seams um, from showing, you know, we're using the Corona triplanar map to blend between those. Actually, if we demo that real quickly, if we just drag the bitmap, so without the Corona triplanar map, if we drag the bitmap into the base color slot here of our physical material, you can see now that. A, we've obviously added the diffuse texture to our material, but B, uh, you know, we're getting this, well, the seam here, right? And probably in a, a couple of other places as well. Now, uh, because we don't want to unwrap this body, that would be too time consuming. We're just going to use the Corona triplanar map here and we're going to plug it into the base color slot. And as you can see, you know, that, that resolves our uh, seams issues here perfectly, right? Right. Now, what we've essentially done is we've, you know, we've plugged in a diffuse map into the base color slot and that resulted in our wood material actually looking more like a wood material would look like. Now, this is a great first step. You know, this material is already looking more like a raw wood material, but you know, we still need to tweak a couple of other settings to get this material to be even more realistic. And uh, the next step for most people is probably adjusting uh, the way that the reflections look like. So uh, how rough or how glossy they are. And for that, we're going to be tweaking the roughness parameter here. Now, the roughness parameter itself is uh, basically, it does the same thing as the glossness parameter did uh, with the Corona legacy material, except that roughness means it works the other way around. It's basically glossiness inverted. Okay, so with glossiness, you were essentially setting how mirror-like the reflections were, but with the roughness parameter, you're setting how rough the reflections are. Now, to simplify that a little bit, if previously with the glossiness parameter, you've used the value of 1.0, okay, you would have ended up with mirror-like reflections, right? But with the roughness parameter, because it's basically inverted glossiness, uh, the end result is going to be the complete opposite. So with the roughness being set to 1.0, your reflections are now going to be super rough. Okay. Now, uh, we've, uh, we've, uh, we've defaulted to using roughness as the, you know, as the default option, the Corona physical material, because roughness is the industry standard for when it comes to material authoring. And that's why uh, you'll see with the, with the new Corona physical material, roughness is the default um, sort of parameter to control uh, the glossiness or roughness of your of your reflections, right? But you know, if you if you're still using glossiness maps, or if you just straight up prefer the glossiness workflow, 
Well, no worries at all. We, we've we got you covered. If you go under the advanced options rollout in the Corona physical material, you're going to see that you have this roughness mode parameter in here. And if you expand it, you're going to see that you can choose between roughness or the glossiness workflows. So if we choose glossiness right now, observe what's going to happen uh, with our material, right? So we're back to using glossiness as our as the way of how we control those uh, reflections, right? So right now, glossiness is set to zero. We're having super rough reflections. So if we up the glossiness to 1.0, we're getting those mirror-like reflections. All right. Okay. But there's a little bit more to it. Okay. So the way that we've switched the roughness mode right now was on a per material basis. Okay. So we went into our Corona physical material here and under its advanced options, we've set the roughness mode to be set to glossiness. If we were to now uh, bring in a different Corona physical material, you're going to see that this one is again going to be using that roughness as its default roughness mode, right? Right, but if we scoot over the render settings, okay, and if we go under this system menu here and system settings, all right, you're going to see that in here, you have this default roughness mode that you can set. And this one basically determines uh, whether roughness or glossiness mode is used as the default one whenever you bring in a new Corona physical material. So right now it's set to roughness. If we switch it to glossiness and hit OK, now the next Corona physical material that we're going to bring in here is going to use the glossiness roughness mode. Okay, now we can always go in here um, under the advanced options, switch it to roughness. And so we've changed the roughness mode to roughness on a per material basis again, right? So again, depending on the workflow that you're into, depending on the workflow that's closest to you, uh, you can change uh, the roughness mode either on a per material basis or as the global default. Now, we will be using roughness here because we do have roughness maps uh, prepared for the, uh, the raw wood material that we're creating here. So let's just switch everything back to be using roughness. All right. Okay. Now, um, speaking of roughness maps, uh, let's bring those over, right? So again, we have these prepared. They're already sort of um, plugged into the Corona triplanar map again, right? And as you can see, you know, we're just dealing with some uh, roughness maps here. And we're going to plug these guys into the base roughness slot. Okay, so this is this slot right here. And immediately you're going to see now that our reflections are starting to look a little bit more diffuse and they have a little bit of those imperfections happening, right? Right, okay, so that takes care of that. Uh, next, we could also tweak the IOR, you know, but I think the default value of 1.5 could work fine for us here. But maybe at this point, we should also mention that you can use the IOR workflow with the new Corona physical material. But if you're a fan of the specular workflow, you can switch to using the specular workflow as well. The procedure is exactly the same as with the roughness mode. So if we go under the advanced options rollout here, you're going to see that you have this IOR mode drop down menu here. And in here, you can switch from using the IOR, IOR mode. Uh, to switching to the Disney specular mode. So if we have uh, specular maps, proper specular maps, that is, you know, you can switch to the specular workflow and plug them in. Now, if you'd like to change the global defaults, again, system, system settings. And in here, you have this default IOR mode, which you can again set to Disney specular. Once you do that, you know, every new Corona physical material that you're going to bring in is going to be using the specified IOR mode, but, uh, you know, we're, 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 we are totally fine with using IOR mode here. Uh, so let's just switch our IOR mode back to IOR here. Let's close the advanced options rollout. And, uh, you know, let's focus on the next, um, piece of the puzzle here. If you will, let's focus on the bump map effect next here. So bump mapping actually works exactly as you did before with the Corona legacy material. So um, all you need to do is you need to bring in a cool and detailed bump map 
and tweak its strength and so on and so forth. So let's do that. Let's bring in a bump map and let's plug it into the base bump slot. Okay. Then uh, what I'm also going to do here is I'm just going to go again under the performance mode. I'm going to disable the fast preview denoise during render just because this way I think the details are going to be a little um, uh, a little less denoised, right? And we're going to be able to see them just a little bit uh, better. So with the bump map now plugged into the bump slot, let's up the amount here just to see how it's all looking. And this is actually... Uh, looking pretty great, although a little bit strong. So maybe we can lower it down to two. Maybe it's still a little bit strong. Maybe we'll lower it down to one. Uh, maybe we could actually go lower to 0 0.5 or so, right? But I do think a value of one could work best here. So as you can see, basically the bump map here works exactly as it did before with the legacy material. You plug it into the base bump slot you know, and then you tweak its strength or, you know, uh, mix other maps in there and so on and so forth. All right. And just like that, as you can see, we came up with this pretty cool looking realistic and convincing raw wood material for our violin body here. Now, again, what we did to get to this material, you know, if we do a bit of an overview of all the steps that we've taken in this tutorial, well, basically, you know, first we've uh, adjusted the metalness parameter to be set accordingly, you know, because wood is a non-metal material. We wanted the metalness to be set to be non-metal. And then we've added a diffuse texture into the base color slot, right? And, you know, then we started adding all the various kinds of imperfections to our material, starting with the uh, roughness map that we've plugged into the roughness slot here, which resulted in these reflections being a little bit imperfect, right? So uh, some parts of this wood material are a bit more rougher than other parts, you know? And then we've added a, a bump map into the base bump slot here so that, you know, we've added some of those bumps and bruises to this raw wood material. All right, so hopefully by now you're starting to get a sense of just how powerful the Corona physical material can be. And at the same time, also how easy it can be to use, right? Because, you know, with the previous material, with the Corona legacy material, you were able to create some pretty iffy materials. But because of the way that the new Corona physical material works, because of the way that its UI also works, you know, uh, you can rest assured that you're creating, creating physically plausible materials. And with that, we're going to be concluding this tutorial. Now, in the next one, we'll take this raw wood material and we're going to make it even cooler. Okay. We're going to be adding a clear coat layer on top of it. And so we can't wait to see you there because that's going to be another fun one.